Hello, welcome to this session on uh, how to start kick start your career in the language industry. Uh, my, name, my name is Maria Sierra Cordova Serrano. Yes, it's a, it's a very long name. And I'm the head of the Translation Studies Unit here at uh, McGill's School of Continuing Studies. And today we are delighted to be here with you to uh, talk about our programs, our newly revised and updated programs. Um, so the first thing that I would like to do is to, so that you know how to, to what we are going to be doing, we're going to go through the agenda. Uh, in the first 15 minutes, we're going to give you an overview of the uh, student population that we have, uh, the language industry, our new curriculum, and, uh, and, and, and then we'll move to the specific programs that we'll be discussing uh, about today. So the first one at 12:15, uh, from 12:15 to 12:30, will be the certificate in translation, the uh, English to French uh, French option. Then from 12:30 to 12:45, we'll be discussing the certificate in. Uh, so the first one will be discussed in French. Uh, it will be Eric, uh, the one presenting the um, discussing the problem. The second one from 12:30 to 12:45 will be the certificate in translation, the French uh, to English option, and it will be my colleague Catherine. And then from uh, 12.45 to 1, I will be uh, discussing in Spanish the certificate in translation, English to Spanish option. And then we'll have half an hour for a QA. and a where you'll be able, able to uh, ask questions, uh, share comments, and uh, share with us all your um, uh, concerns or any, 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 any single thing that, you know, that question that you may have about the profession, but as well about the programs. Um, so this, this agenda, by the way, is available in PDF. You can download it. Yes. It will not pop up if when you click on it. It's in the. Uh, you should be able to see it in the video description on the on the side, and just click on it. It will download. Um, you have to go to your downloads and click on it to open it. It will not pop up by itself, but uh, it's there. Um, we have it on the left hand side, here. That's perfect. So you may be consulting the PowerPoint as we are talking, and then you can keep it for later if you have, if you want to review any aspects of what we have presented today. And before moving forward, I'd like to properly introduce my colleagues. Uh, first of all, here I have Eric Dupont, um, and uh, he has been teaching at McGill School, uh, McGill University Schools uh, of Continuing Studies since 2003. Uh, after studying and working in Austria and Germany, he completed a master's and a PhD in French studies at the University of Toronto. He has translated for federal agencies such as the Competition Bureau of Canada and Industry Canada, and for private sector clients such as Clark's Canada, he likes shoes, and VTD Florist Transport Delivery, he likes flowers. He has also translated essays on political writing for Lux Editeur, um, a very small but nice and uh, independent and strong publishing company in Montreal. His areas of specialization are economic and financial translation and transcreation. And we'll discuss what transcreation is later. Eric is also a novelist, actually a very well novelist, a winner of the Prix des Libraires and the Prix des Collégiens pour la fiancée américaine. In 2013, he has also he was also the finalist for the 2018 Scotiabank Giller Prize for Songs of the uh, uh, for the Cold of Heart, translated by Peter McCambridge. Beautifully translated by Peter McCambridge. <laughs> the translators are important after all, right? They are. Sure. Okay, and here I have with me as well my colleague Catherine. Dr. Catherine Radford is a Montreal translator and educator who holds a master's degree in translation and a PhD in comparative literature from the University of Montreal. Her alma mater is Victoria College at the University of Toronto. Other universities attended through the various, uh, various programs include Aix-en-Provence, Marseille, De, Paris 4, e and, uh, e -E -E, and Salamanca, Spain. Catherine's main working languages are French, English, and Spanish, and her translation clients and employers have ranged from Montreal advertising agencies to a Paris University chair, 
and it's Dominican Republic UN office, so very diverse experience. Among her particular fields of interest are popular culture, advertising and marketing in and international politics. And currently she is translating a Greek novel into English as well. Greek is part of her uh, language combination that she wants. She was very modest and didn't want to add it in her bio. Catherine has been teaching for us for the translation department at McGill's School of uh, Continuing Studies over uh, 20 years, right? Okay. And what about yourself, Maria Sierra? Yes. <laughs> I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Maria Sierra Cuadro Serrano, who is an associate professor and the head of the translation unit here at the Continuing, Continuing Studies. After studying and working in Spain, Belgium, and the UK, she completed a master's degree and PhD in translation studies at the University of Ottawa. She then landed a full-time academic position at Monterey Institute of International Studies in California. That was in 20, 2009, 2009, where she was an associate professor until 2017. Then she joined McGill. A self-described academic practitioner, Maria Sierra, is the Spanish translator of Mikolski and Six Degrés de Liberté by award-winning Quebec novelist Nicolas Dicler. She has also translated on a freelance basis for such clients as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Council of Foreign Relations, Steinbeck National Center, Microsoft and Multicorpora. Academic publications include Le Québec traduit en Espagne, Analyse sociologique de l'exportation d'une culture périphérique, and numerous book chapters and articles in international peer-reviewed journals. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, Eric, you want to continue? With, uh, let's talk about uh, who you are going to be studying. Yes, with, that's uh, a very good question. I think that should be uh, that we should talk about the type of students that we usually welcome in our classrooms. Um, and in our experience, we've seen, and research also has shown that there are certain type of profiles. There are certain profiles of people who. Uh, sign up for a translation uh, for a certificate in translation at the uh, School of Continuing Studies. Um, and you can find these profiles in the PDF that uh, you can download from the uh, video description. Um, they are accompanied uh, by, um, with Im by images. Um, first of all, you could um, describe our students as career builders, uh, people who already have a degree but who want to specialize and uh, and choose our school for that. Uh, then you could have um, uh, you could uh, some of them could be described as a career rebuilder. Uh, for example, people who arrive from different countries or for uh, uh, who go through the process of immigration and 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 need uh, a Canadian experience uh, before they. Um, they, they can uh, integrate the uh, the work the, the the labor market here in Montreal, and then you have the uh, you know often you'll see uh, people who are trying to balance family with work and with studies, and I guess you could call those career balancer, uh, you know people who are trying to work and study while taking care of a young family, and uh, you'll have also the career switcher. Those are people who, for example, will realize after. I don't know, um, they have an established career, let's say they're high school teachers in languages, and they suddenly realize that they, that they are yearning, that they, are, uh, that they would like to have a, a quieter, a more, um, a, a more you know, a quieter type of work, work from home, and be in contact with fewer people than in a high school, for example. You would call that a, a career yeah, switcher. Would be a career switcher for I guess. Science. Yes, we have a lot of those. Uh, we also have uh, what you would call a career accelerator. It is uh, uh, somebody who wants to, uh, who is already translating because, you know, translating is, uh, you, you could compare translation to, uh, to other activities. Uh, you can ask the question, is it enough to be bilingual, to be a translator? Well, that's the well, question we get all the time. That's the question we get all the time. And you could all, you could, you know, just transform the question slightly and say, do two fully workable legs, are two fully workable legs enough to dance tango? Is, is it enough for you to dance tango? No, it, you need you know, additional skills, you know? And so we have a lot of people who are very strong in their uh, target language, in their main language, who are already translating, but they need training on CAT tools, on computer-assisted translation. They need to know if they're doing the right thing. They need some uh, 
specialization and these career accelerators come to us. And uh, finally, you'll have uh, the career liberators, the people who uh, uh, would like to travel. They want to be working uh, anywhere. And with the connected world, uh, we live in a connected world nowadays, and people want to be able to uh, to be a freelancer, let's say, in Brazil, uh, just for, for argument's sake. And uh, so they will uh, they will come to us and get the skills that they need to uh, uh, fulfill their dreams. There yes. are also some people who come who just love learning. Yes. Perhaps, perhaps they're working full time. Perhaps they're semi-retired. But they want intellectual stimulation. They want to mm. keep studying. And some of the people that we have fall belong to all of these categories or to many categories. I don't know if you remember this student we had from France. Who... The one who wanted to have goats yes. and translate. Yes. Yes, she wanted to settle down in Charlevoix in rural Quebec Why not? and be a freelancer there. So I guess she would be a career rebuilder, a liberator as well. It's somebody who was looking for freedom. And a balance. And a, a balance, balance in her life. yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, so this is a kind of two students that we welcome in uh, our classrooms. So very, very diverse uh, mm -hmm. student population with very different goals and, and uh, right and aspirations. Mm -hmm. So um, They really come from all paths. It is, yeah, it is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. The school is beautiful I mean, and I mean, enriching yeah. about uh, teaching uh, in these groups is that, uh, I mean, yeah. They learn as much as we learn from them and their career paths and the, the you know everything that they have done and doing with them. Yes. Okay. So we're going to move now to talk very briefly because we don't have a lot of time about the uh, language industry, right, Catherine? Yes, it, it is very interesting. The, the latest statistics that we have, um, the demand for language professionals is expected to grow in the coming years across North America, particularly in Canada. The Canadian Statistics Employment and Social Development Canada has forecasted a 12% increase starting from 2016 up to 2026 in the translation department. That, that means people like translators, terminologists, and interpreters. The United States is something similar. And what is interesting to me is that translation is seen as one of the professions in the language industry. And that includes copywriters, revisers, editors, terminologists, interpreters, trans creators. There's that trans creation, trans creators. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it again. Localizers language consultants, and translation project managers, mm -hmm. just to name a few. So basically, Catherine, uh, all people involved in the language industry do not necessarily translate Correct. in the end. That's Correct. You may have a bilingual project manager who is not actively translating but knows about translation. And who has to know about has translation. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I mean, in yes. fact, there are project managers that do not, in the language industry, do not know about translation, and we can see the result. Yes. <laughs> and so, uh, so it's very important. Uh, and then, as I was, uh, we were discussing before. Sometimes you don't want a freelance uh, a job; you want an in-house uh, employ, uh, you know, a position. Yeah, corporate, corporate. So then, uh, you may want to be a project manager because you mm -hmm. want to work in-house. And, and if you work in the, you know, in the U.S., you want benefits. That can be. There are many motivations why you would want to be in-house, or you would want to be a career liberator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have taken all this data. So our student population profile. We have also taken data about the industry, the language industry, the changes in the language industry. And we have uh, rebuilt, we have revamped, we have revised our curriculum. But before telling you more about those revisions, I'd like to tell you more of the general, uh, let, let's say the highlights about the three certificates that we have. Mm -hmm. So we have three language pairs, and we have here the person who presented each language pair. So English, the English into French option, the French into English option, and the, Sp and the uh, English into Spanish option. The certificate, how many credits? So we're talking about 30 credits. But there is a course at the beginning. We call it a co uh, correct, correct. prerequisite correct. Right? Uh, that you have as well to take. So in total, we are talking about 33 credits. And it's a part-time program conceived for people that are working most of the time working full time. So the program can be completed in as quickly as two years part time. It's two years, it's only 30 credits, but it's two years because it's part time. It's six know? semesters. Six semesters. That's very important because the summer, spring, summer counts. It so uh, fall, winter, and spring, summer. In the spring, summer, sometimes we have online, like 
this year we had an online course and the theory course was online so that students could take a course and at the same time be able to go on holidays for one week or two so that was and it worked very well i was a you know i think a very successful experience. i was actually teaching it from brazil that's it so, so that was flexibility for everybody uh that's the only online course that we have at the moment and another one in the spanish program okay so so the courses are face to face a very flexible it's a very flexible flexible pro uh, schedule